Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about the cello. So I'm sure many of you are aware about this instrument. It is one of the most prominent instruments in the string section of the orchestra. So it looks a little bit like this. It's quite similar to the violin, but it's got quite a bit notable, quite a few notable differences. One being it's much larger. This is the view of someone holding a cello. So I think you can see the way you hold the cello is you play it not like this, which is the case of the violin viola, but in fact you sit down, you keep it in between your legs, and you play it like this. So your fingers are up here, and your bow is down here. So that's how you do it, and you're playing this on a chair. Okay, now let's. Have a close look at it. Now, the cello plays in the tenor register, that means it plays in the low register. It's a moderately low to low, so it's not very low like a double bass, but it plays in the moderately low uh, register, but it's still very perceivable. And it's got a very, very rich tone and texture. So, violin, the violin has a discerning one, but the cello has a rich one. It sounds very, it's got a very, very rich tone, that's something I do want to mention. And as you might imagine, it's quite low. Now, it's also quite big. And now, before we move any further about the instrument itself, I want to get into its structure, so we can just identify everything. Alright, it's got once again a very similar structure to that of a violin, so let's go let's attack it one by one. This top part right here is called a scroll, and it's called a scroll because it looks like a piece, a rolled up piece of paper, but it's of course made out of wood. And it houses the tuning pegs and the wound up strings, that being the perfect date to the tuning pegs. They're of course pegs to tune the strings, they make them higher and lower, and as with all string instruments which I've been covering so far, these are, these are as a crude, they're just pieces of wood inserted inside um, two holes, and it's just very hard to turn them, and they're very crude, they may usually have much larger turn, like you may have very big differences. The point being, tuning any, any one of these string instruments is very hard. As I said, the strings are wound up here, and then they move down, like so, and then these strings are tuned very low. And then this is the f this black thing you can see down here is the fingerboard, and that's where you place your fingers. So you create different sounds with the cello by placing your fingers on the fingerboard. By sort of placing your finger on the fingerboard, the higher up it is on the fingerboard, the closer it is to the bridge, the higher the sound is going to be. So if you play here, if you put your finger here, the sound is going to become very high. If you put your finger there, it's going to be very very low. If you play it open, that's the lowest sound possible. Okay, so that's the fingerboard. If you look towards the back of it, you can see here. We have the side view, right? We have the neck, and the neck is, as you might imagine, the neck before it's the body. And you might notice something that this is shaven off, the wood is shaved off. Because in the cello, you actually move your hand up and down quite a bit because you want to access the fingerings here, 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 right? And because you're moving your hand, if this happened to be varnished and painted like the rest of the wood, it would be extremely difficult to do, so it would be a very big impedance. So to prevent that, the wood is shaved there, so it's easier to move your hand up and down. Okay, now let's move further down, we get to the body of the cello. It looks similar to a violin, but it is subtly different, where um, if you want to know the difference, this is slightly bigger. This is, this is slightly bigger than that in the violin, so it's still smaller than the second one, but slightly bigger. Uh, minute differences, but you can spot it if you've been in enough contact with these, with these instruments. Okay, so once again, it's got a very distinctive shape, and we come down, and the body of the violin, as you can see, it's a wood sandwich once again, with a hollow chamber in the center, but once again, quite a big, bigger design. So violins is quite small, this is quite a big, big, quite a bit of, quite a large chamber for the sound to resonate in. And then we come down, and we have the strings, which are, there are four strings on the cello, and we come to the bridge. Let's talk about the bridge. And the bridge, as you can see, is a piece of wood that juts out there, has a very distinctive look. I wanted to show it to you but in either of these images, but I'm sure you must have seen a bridge before. And this is extremely important because not only does it bring the tension to the strings, that means that um, the strings would create a sound properly because you created the tension on the bridge, but it's also extremely important in the resonating sound and making the sound come out properly and loudly and prominently. And we'll come to how that happens later. Anyways, that's the bridge, very important. Then over here we have the F holes. They're called the F holes because they look like lowercase f's. And if you can see the way, minute arches here. I'm not sure if it, will, it, it won't be visible to you. But yeah, take my word for it, it looks like a lowercase f. Then you move down and here you have this holster here which holds the strings. The strings end over here. And once again, just like with the viola and violin, you have some fine tuners. As I said, these tuners are quite um, crude. You know, you can only make big jumps in pitch. So tune, the fi tune it finely, you have small gear-like mechanisms over here to do so. 
right? And these are much more fine tuning so that you can get the pitch exactly how you want it. Anyway, this whole circle of the down there, the A hole is there, and one thing you realize is as, as I said, the stereo is not played like this, um, it's played like this, but the thing to realize is it's not that big. So if I just pull it on the ground, it would only come up to about my heel, and that's quite, quite problematic to play. So there's in fact a thing which unscrews and comes all the way down right here and right here. Sometimes it's got a point to it, a sharp point, if you're doing it on a carpeted surface, that's ideal. Or, in more uh, more commonly, it has a um, sort of rubber foot to it, so that I can work with any with that, so that I can work with any surface um, at all. And once again, that just elevates the cello, so it's easier for you to play. And because it's modular, as you can see, there's a key here to put it up and down. You can, if you're a short person, it can be shorter. If you're a tall person, it can be taller. If you want it to be tall for some reason, it can be tall or short. I'm sure you get the gist of it. So that's the basic anatomy of a cello. Not really much more to it. As for how the sound works, once again, the cello, like most like all the string instruments I'm covering so far is a bowed string instrument and what that makes it is if we use a bow. Now this is not a cello bow, this is a violin bow. I unfortunately don't have access to either a cello or violin or cello bow due to the coronavirus pandemic at the moment. However, as you can see, it looks quite similar. The cello bow is just larger and thicker. And once again, we have the arch, then we have the hair, which is either synthetic hair or um, horse hair. And then we have the frog with this part, and just like with a violin bow, this can be tightened, so it loosened like this, becomes very loose, or it can be tightened, it becomes very tight. And it's this bow moving across the string in this action this time, like this action, at about here, it's a bow moving across the string that's vibrating the string and creating that sound. That vibration hits the bridge and goes through the bridge into this hollow chamber here. Now in that hollow chamber, there's something called the sound post. It's a structure that allows that sound to resonate properly. Then it bounces back and forth inside this chamber, gains volume, gains tone quality, and then exits through the F holes like this. So that's how you'd be able to create, um, you know, this full sort of, um, uh, with a very strong texture, very loud, full sound with a cello, where just strings vibrating. Because if you didn't have this entire contraption, sophisticated, this may not look sophisticated, but there's an anatomy inside the cello as well. If you didn't have this, uh, if you ever heard an electric cello, imagine an electric cello which is not plugged in. It will sound exactly like that. Okay, so that's enough about the anatomy of a cello and how it creates sound. Let's talk about its position in the orchestra. As I said, let's first talk about the quartets, because that's where one cello shines. So the quartet is a group of instruments, quite common in classical music, which consists of two violins, a viola and a cello. And as you might imagine, the cello plays the lowest parts in a quartet. It has, it is, has a supporting role most of the time, and a complement to the violin which plays the melody, but at times in a quartet, um, so the cello will take over and play the melody itself. Even in orchestra, we've got a similar circumstance going. So the cello is usually giving an accompaniment, right? It's either harmonizing, that means it's sort of supporting the main melody, or it's a comp or it's got a, a accompanying melody. That means it's a melody, not the main melody. Just want to accompany, you know, the proper tune of the orchestra. Point is, it has a supporting role in the orchestra most of the time, but it's not uncommon to see the cello have a big role in the orchestra every now and then. And same for the quartet. Now, in addition to being, you know, a part of the quartet and a part of the orchestra, the cello is also very has quite a few famous solo works. We have cello sonatas, cello suites, cello concertos, and there are many other forms of cello solo works, and most cellists will know that they exist, and you will find, you can find tons. Um, Bach's cello suite number one, the prelude is particularly famous. Da, 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 uh, cellists tend to hate that song because it's so overplayed, but yeah, so I think the cello also has quite a bit of solo repertoire, and not only restricted to being a supporting role in the orchestra or the quartet. And as I said, they have a very distinctive sound. I really like the sound of cello. It's, um, it's very difficult to describe in words, but it's got a very rich, um, heavy, and full sound to it. Very, and yeah, so, so it's thick as well. The sound is, has a very strong texture to it. Ah, it's very difficult to describe in words. It sounds kind of weird, but yeah, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy listening to the cello, and it, that's why probably the cello's tone is, when you're looking for a cello, you often look at that tone, and yeah. That's all I really want, that's all I really know about the channel. That being said, from my side, um, I thank you for watching this video. Um, I wish you a wonderful rest of the day and for the channel. Thank you very much.